<laughs> hey, um, out there in uh, the internet. Uh, this is a video concerning the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, yeah, you can see this isn't the best way of having it set up. It's, it's a very light board, so most likely if you keep the cables taut, the connection should be okay. This is for mostly testing purposes. Um, it's a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte, um, top of the line. With the heat, this came in a can of kit. Uh, they provided, I don't know if they provide or if you get the heat sinks with the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte, but, um, I bought their uh, recommended power supply as well. Um, you can see right here there is a Raspberry Pi 3. Very stable. Um, I've never had any issues with this thing. It has played flawlessly. Honestly, uh, I had to make sure an internet connection was really well. Um, I now run through Ethernet instead of coax to the, uh, to the router. Um, it's just the best way to do it. So um, right now you can see I have a small fan kind of keeping it cool. It's not really touching anything. It's just kind of floating there and it just uh, makes sure that, that the pie is actually cool and it runs very cool. Um, right now it's running at 30 degrees Celsius which is extremely cool. Um, so you can see there is uh, a video. Um, just give me a second here. Let me just press play and you can hear the audio. And yeah, so you hear the audio. I'm using my um, uh, what is it? My favorite website, edgeofwonder.tv, subscription wise, but they won't mind me just showing you just a second of it. I bet you it's just a second. Um, but uh, as of right now, <clears throat> you can see that uh, it's actually at 1080. The Raspberry Pi 4 is capable of 4K on dual screens. Uh, this TV is capable of 4K, but I found that uh, it runs quite slow, even with the 4 gigabyte at 4K. That's, I mean, it's a really high resolution, so you need a lot of RAM just to continually do anything. And I found 1080p is just a really nice uh, aspect ratio to run on. A lot of videos are not really up uploaded. Uh, past 1080 at this moment in time, you still have the 4K videos coming out. Uh, and even then I almost positive like the, the programs or the companies that do offer 4k upload like YouTube or something like that they're most likely not going to have uh, the server capacity to provide for the 4k resolution and they're most likely going to use some sort of um, uh, software to encode into a lower uh, resolution state or just to make it work and that's not true 4K. You actually want true 4K, which is actually the server backing it up and producing it through the throughput. And then obviously on your end, you having the upload and download capacity to produce that. So um, right now I have fiber optic cable, so we're, uh, we're good. This is up, uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 has the uh, 5 gigahertz AC chip in it. Um, producing, uh, what is it, you know, faster internet. I also have a hundred up, uh, up and down speed, so it's good for just, I mean, to test this out. There's nothing on right now in this house. Um, so the concept being is, is that the issues with the Raspberry Pi 4 screen wise. Okay, let's just get it started. Um, Raspberry Pi 4, they say, is tested out of the box. Everything um, that the, every one of the Raspberry Pis is tested out of the factory. And what it does is that they test it with the, the uh, Raspbian or Ras Buster, uh, Raspberry Pi Buster. I can't remember what, um, what uh, operating system this is. I can't, it's Buster, though. Um, Raspy Buster, something like that. And what it is is that uh, noobs will download that version. I just uh, flashed the uh, operating system to um, an SD card. And uh, it's a uh, class 10 SD card, so it shouldn't have any problems doing anything with this stuff. But uh, the issue that I had was is that when I would put the SD card in and I would start up the operating system to begin with, it would ask you where you're at, and then it would ask you, hey, you want to start a, uh, do the password, change the password to the uh, Pi, and then it asks you where, what's your internet, and then it'll ask you again, do you want to update? Every single time I would update it, it would work flawlessly, it would start up once, I think it was, 
and then all of a sudden not work. The screen would say no signal. And this has happened several times. You can go on the internet and this is actually a major problem for the Raspberry Pi. The issue is, is that freaking, um, it, I've tried everything. Basically, from the get-go with the very start uh, startup that you download and flash to it, do not upgrade. It'll ask you in the very beginning, do you want to upgrade? Skip the upgrade because I've had a really good success every single time. I, this thing has been flawless since then. I've been able to restart it, and, uh, no problem. But even then, with the no upgrade, the problem is, is that when you restart it, I think after two times, you lose audio. And I realized that this Raspberry Pi still has the audio jack involved with the two HDMIs. So I didn't know what was going on. I totally, I thought they took that out with the last one because this is, this is a really good option to have. I mean, you, if you have an older TV, you can still use this thing. And it's nice that they included it in this uh, high performance machine, even though you're really lagging behind in the times if you use that. So apparently uh, what I did was, um, there's an option, you know, I'm noobs when it comes to Linux. You have your, uh, you want to go to your command line. And when you go to your command line, there's a command that basically says, Rat, you, you do sudo, of course. Oh, my bad. It's sudo, but it's raspy config. And what it does is it brings up this screen right here, which is your configuration. This is a different level of configuration. You should be able to do everything in the, uh, operating system but this is just a different level and what you do is you go down to configure advanced settings and then uh, you force the audio force audio out through HDMI I found that all of a sudden sound stops working but when you use that option you force it through the HDMI now the sound starts working again so I just want to let everybody know that that's been my best option of making this work so far um, you can choose whether to use 4k if you want it to run slow I use 1080p it runs a lot faster that way um, but other than that the Raspberry Pi has been beautiful it runs it very well uh, everything looks really good crystal clear I have not upgraded this thing from the base option so far if you even so much as use that upgrade option screen will go black. This is the only way I've gotten the Raspberry Pi 4 to run flawlessly sound and screen every single time you turn it on so without actually changing any options going into your config uh, tech.txt file. This is what I found if you're a simple user and you want it to work out the box watch this video you can see it works and you can see it's clearly running right now down there. So, um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, remember, force the audio through the HDMI. Somehow it gets uh, messed up and you'll get no audio for some odd reason. Go into that, force the audio, and everything will work. And from then on, it should work flawless. And then I'll wait a couple of months before I have to uh, do any, or what is it, upgrade it, and then see what happens. This thing is just a streaming machine at this moment in time. We just stream it and sit on the couch. So, um, I hope you got something out of this, okay? <laughs> Enjoy it, and um, the Raspberry Pi community, thank you very much. You guys are wonderful, and this is a great piece of equipment. So, enjoy.